It was at that moment that Australian yachting technology was spectacularly jibed onto the world stage. One nation cheered in unison, the other wept. The design genius, Ben Lexan, became famous and thousands dreamed the unattainable, being able to afford one of his sleek aluminium racers. It's a 35 foot, 10.7 metre cruiser racer. Great fun to sail, but what's really intriguing is how it was made. You can get a hint from her name. Ironically, Don Richardson got his inspiration for a radical new boat building technology from techniques used in the American aerospace industry. And today, he has a working prototype to show the world. Aluminium construction has already proven popular at both the very bottom and the very top of the market. At the bottom, the familiar slab-sided hardshine dinghy and runabouts. At the top, one-off fabrications of aluminium sheets over an intricate framework, like the expensive Australia two-hull. What Don Richardson has done is come up with a production line method that could turn out aluminium boats 35 to 40 per cent cheaper than hand fabrication. It's a technique applicable to 6 to 15 metre yachts, a market previously dominated by fibreglass production methods. Marine grade aluminium alloy sheets are first bent into the general shape required. Conventional technology can only bend in one direction, so the more compound curving will come later. The key is this unique mould, essentially a cage built in an excavation pit. It's made of strips of steel alloy with a two millimetre gap between. Now that gap's significant because it allows air to pass between at the time of an explosion. Yes, explosion. Each aluminium sheet is lowered into the steel cage mould. The sheets are welded together, giving a rough shape. The straight edges don't conform to the sleek design, but that's about to change. A concrete lining beneath the metal cage means this can quickly be turned into a nautical swimming pool. It's this very high velocity explosives that will create the final shape. Rather than sticks of gelignite, the flexible long cord of explosives gives a more accurate charge and allows better positioning in the water. Any uneven force coming from the explosion would put curves where they weren't wanted. While there is an explosive expert there to supervise the detonation, there are some unique advantages to this job. Just turn hard. This is something I've always wanted to do. $30 worth of gelignite has certainly pushed the metal out into the graceful curves to fulfil the design completed by Peter Lowe, Lexan's partner. But it still leaves one puzzling question. Why doesn't the explosion damage the mould that you're creating the boat in? Well, the explosion is uh, a high energy uh, released over a very short period of time, fraction of a second, and it causes a plastic deformation of the metal into the mould. The mould is some 20 tonnes, while the workpiece itself within the mould is less than one tonne. That's uh, been calculated so that the mould has a life of more than 200 boats. But to date, there's only one exploding yacht on the harbour, the result of one man's fascination with a unique metal. Aluminium has many advantages. Uh, it is a material that is, when compared with fiberglass, free from osmosis. It is tough, it is durable, it's safe at sea. It is a material that uh, doesn't suffer from the uh, occupational health problems that uh, the fiberglass industry has for applicators. And it is a material that is relatively inexpensive. Fully fitted, gelignite would cost around $95,000, which isn't exactly inexpensive. But then, Alan Bond spent $650,000 on Australia 2's hull to deliver his moment of glory. 